Welcome to our lecture online. So that the harmonic or the quantum harmonic oscillator makes more sense, we want to relate it to something real. And something real would be like a diatomic molecule. Let's say, for example, a carbon monoxide molecule that has an atom that is carbon, so let's call that with a mass of m1, and an atom that is oxygen, let's call that a mass of m2. So what do we mean by a reduced mass? Well, we realize that the angular frequency of an oscillator like that, a diatomic molecule, is equal to the square root of the spring constant divided by the reduced mass. And the spring constant is related to the intermolecular forces between the two atoms, and we'll talk about that a little bit later in more detail. But now we want to talk about the reduced mass. So in a case like this, where we have a diatomic molecule, where one atom is carbon and the other atom is oxygen, we realize that the carbon atom has a mass of 12, ato 12 atomic mass units, which in kilograms would be 12 times 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms, because that is the mass of an atomic mass unit. And for the oxygen uh, atom, the mass would be 16 atomic mass units, which therefore is 16 times the mass of one atomic mass unit in kilograms. So if we're going to calculate the reduced mass of this molecule right here, carbon monoxide, we take the product of the two masses divided by the sum. Let's keep it simple and do it in terms of atomic mass units. So 12 times 16 divided by 12 plus 16, that ends up being 6.86 atomic mass units. And therefore, when we multiply that times the ratio of the number of kilograms per atomic mass units, we get about 1.145 times 10 to the minus 26 kilograms, which is the reduced mass of this molecule. So in other words, that would be the value that you'd plug in for m sub r in here, and then to find the angular frequency of this particular molecule, we'd also would need to know the spring constant, and we'll talk about that one later. So now at least we understand what we mean by the reduced mass. Now, let's take a look at how it relates relative to the relative size of the two masses. If, for example, one of the masses is much, much larger than the other mass, the reduced mass becomes approximately equal to the large of the two masses. Let's say that M1 was a thousand times M2, then the reduced mass would be very nearly the mass of M1. But if the masses are equal to each other, for example, if we had a diatomic molecule like oxygen or nitrogen, then the reduced mass would simply be half the mass of one or the other. For example, if this was diatomic oxygen, then the reduced mass would be half the mass of an oxygen atom, or, well, there's only one type, so yes, it would be half the mass of an oxygen atom, because the two masses, of course, would be equal. So in conclusion, the reduced mass is simply a ratio of the masses of the two atoms in an oscillator, in, for example, a diatomic molecule. If one is much larger, the reduced mass is very nearly the large one. If they're equal in size, then it's simply half the mass of either one of them. And that's what we mean by the reduced mass, and it's one big component in the de determination of what the angular frequency of oscillation is of that simple harmonic oscillator, or in this case, the quantum harmonic oscillator, because it can only have quantum values, not continuous values. And that's the big difference between the two.